Seminole family, man. What's hood? It's the Polk County Knoll. Back at it with y'all. Big week for the Knolls. Big new week, a lot of news. Y'all know how I do. We're going to go over it, give my opinions on it, uh, give my grades on uh, how I feel Norvell is doing on not only hiring his staff, but the way he, uh, way he performed and his staff performed on this early signing day. Um, Y'all can probably hear the, uh, the rain in the background, man. I'm sitting out here just enjoying the weather. I love the rain, personally. And I'm sitting out here just enjoying the weather on this night. I don't know how well y'all can see it. This what a typical Hawaii night look like. Uh, I love it, man. Reminds me of Florida, so I love it. Unlike Florida, though, Miami, uh, Miami. Hawaii don't really have the thunderstorms and all that. You know, in Florida, we got them thunderstorms and all that. But you just get a lot, a lot of rain. It's relaxing, man. Sitting here. Got my drizank. So we good to go. Good to give y'all these news and notes. Let's do it, man. Let's start off. Hold on, put the phone down. All right, let's start off. And uh, I want to start off. So I'm going to start off, we're going to start off with recruiting, right? We're going to start off with the early signing day. That's the big news. I think that's what everybody wants to talk about, my opinions on uh, how I feel like we fared on early signing, uh, the first early signing period under Coach Norvell and his staff. Drink. Um, yeah, man, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So let's go position by position. So, of course... We'll start with the big, the big, the big, in my opinion, the big news. I called it. Last video, if you watched it, I called it. I said, the boy was going to be a part of this class. My new favorite player, because I love his name. The 6'2 quarterback out of Arizona, 210 pounds. Chubba Purdy. <laughs> yeah, man, Chubba Purdy. Flips from Louisville. Coach Norvell somehow pulls that off. Uh, so Jeff Sims decommits, and they trade Jeff Sims with a quarterback that's rated higher than Chubba Purdy. I, I'm a fan of it. I like it. Um, you get Chubba Purdy. You also get 6'4", 190-pound quarterback out of Valdosta, Georgia. Tate, road maker. That's another signing I like. I mean, you basically trade it one for two, and... You could argue, you know, one's a better prospect. It's an argument, but one's a better prospect. We traded one for two. This is the first time we've signed a high school quarterback, let alone two high school quarterbacks, um, in two years. Um, I don't fault the previous coaching staff for that first year that they took over. They were salvaging a class, but last year... Um, Last year was a black eye because last year, not only did you not sign a quarterback, they signed no skill position players at all last year. Well, this staff completely flipped it. Um, how much credit goes to this staff and the former staff? We'll get into that a little bit. But starting off, quarterbacks, you got two of them. I think you got two really good ones. Um, I think Rotomaker is your, is, your, is your project guy, your guy with, I think has a, a high ceiling and I think a high floor, right? I don't. You know, I think even if Rodemaker never turns out to be great, I think that's probably a solid guy you'll be able to throw in there for some starts in case of an injury or something. But at 6'4", 190, he's also a guy that, who knows, you might can develop him into a superstar. You never know. And I think Trevor Purdy, to be, I'm going to say it, I said it in the last video, we would get him, so I'm going to say it right here. You heard it here first with the Polk County no. That guy might start day one next year. I was saying it about Jeff Sims all along. I said, Jeff Sims... It's probably your day one starter next year. And that was under Bryles. And that was because of Sims' running ability and his long ball ability. Well, this is a guy that I think throws the ball more consistently than Sims. And from what I'm hearing and from the video and, the, and some of the videos I see, might be a better runner. Now, I'll take that with a grain of salt because I follow recruiting. And let me tell you something. State of Florida, we different down there. This kid's from Arizona. He's not seeing the same athletes. I'm going to just go ahead and put it out there. So the state before is a little different. Sims is probably facing better competition up there in Jacksonville. But I think Purdy can be, he can be your day one guy next year, if we're being honest. 
Um, yeah, that's your quarterbacks, both signed on Wednesday. Now we'll go to running backs after I take a sip. Uh, running back. Let me flip to it. Toa Feely commits. Here we go. Lawrence Toa Feely. I think she's from Pinellas in Florida. I didn't write it down. I probably should have. But he's a six foot, 180 pound back man. I believe he was a finalist for the Florida for Florida football player, uh, Mr. High School. What do they call it? Mr. Football. They used to call it when I was in high school. It used to be called uh, the high school Heisman, if I'm not mistaken. I think they call it like Mr. Football now or something. Um, but that he was a finalist for that in the state of Florida. Uh, we need more running backs, but I like Lawrence Torrefilly a lot. Him and Knighton would have been a great one too. Um, shout out to Knighton. The reason I say shout out to Knighton, no, he did not sign with the Seminoles. Um, he signed with Miami, but uh, Knighton. My god brother and uh, my, my godmother, their family, they're Knightons, that's family. So shout out to Knighton, man. I wish you nothing but the best down there in Miami. Wish you would have been a no, but either way, it's all good. That's family. Back to Toa Feely. I'm, I'm happy he signed. I'm proud. Um, he's a good running back prospect. We need probably two, two more. Um, we need two more for sure, but Lawrence Torfili at running back. Let's go to receiver. We got three of them, with one on the way, I'm hoping. But let's talk about the three we got, and we'll get to that other one later. First up, Kentron Portier, 6'3", 200 pounds out of West Palm. I'm going to say it here now, and this is the theme that I will use. I already said it once about Jeff Sims and the Chubba Purdy thing. We'll see how that one turns out. Florida's different, especially South Florida. Kentron Portier at 6'3", 200, playing out of West Palm. He's probably a four-star anywhere else in the country. South, South, if you play, if you're from, West, if you're from Palm Beach County, Broward, or Dade, and you're a three-star, you're a four-star anywhere else in the country, and, I'm, and, that's, I, and I mean that. Those guys, guys like Antonio Brown was from Miami. Look what he was. He was a three-star. Look what he turned out to be. And I can go on and on and on about the Khalil Maxwell world. Guys out of Dade, Broward, Palm Beach. He's a four-star anywhere else. So I'm looking at him as a four-star. Great measurable. 6'3", 200. He's got some get-up. He's got some good athleticism. There's your sleeper pick um, at, the wide, at the wide receiver. The wide receiver, excuse my paper, man. Let me, let me move that. Let me move that. Other wide receiver we got, Shaquille Douglas out of Louisiana. I love Louisiana players, too. Um, if there's one state that I think pound for pound competes with Florida, it ain't Texas, it ain't California. Those two states have players off of sheer numbers because of their size. There's one state that I think goes pound for pound with Florida. It's Louisiana. They produce some dogs down there. I think we got us one. He's short in stature, 5'9", but he's built at 187. I seen his tape. Dude's got some get up. They say he runs a 10, a 10, a 10, 600 drink. I even saw a rumor that he runs around a 4'3", 4'4", 4'40". Seen his tape. He runs away from guys. Um, we'll see. We'll see how he does at the collegiate level. But again, that's another four star I like to pick up. Then, of course, the big get was long time rumored. Uh, Brian Robinson had huge ties with uh, Ron Dugans. So, that's, of course, a big deal. Probably why he signed 6'1, 185. He's just an all around receiver in my book. Um, good size, good speed. You know, probably your best all around guy as of right now, Brian Robinson. And uh, let's go to tight end. Signed one tight end so far. Probably won't sign a lot of tight ends in this class. But Carter Boltwright is your tight end. 6'4", 227 pounds. I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up anyone's ass. I haven't watched this tape. I haven't watched a lot about him. But you got him in for some numbers. Hey, yeah, yeah. good signing as far as I'm concerned. Carter Boltwright, hope to see good things from you. Let's go on this O-line. They signed three O-linemen. 
first one, Zane Herring, 6'5", 300 pound, three star. Thomas Schrader, 6'5", 283, three star. And then Lloyd, what is it, Lloyd? Willis, 6'7", 310 pound tackle. So of the three, I think Lloyd Willis is your potential. Well, he's, he's the one that was recruited as a tackle. And he's probably your potential superstar, right? He's the guy that everybody says has the high ceiling. He's the guy that, I mean, at 6'7", 3'10", if the kid's got any kind of bend and athleticism to him, should be very good to watch going forward. Uh, I don't think any of these guys are day one starter Seminoles. So if we're hoping for some day one relief on the O-line, it ain't going to be from these three. Um, but I think you got three solid recruits. Three big boys at all, 6'5 plus. So, I mean, probably out of all three of these guys, I think Thomas Schrader is probably the best of the three, if I had to say myself personally. And, uh, yeah, that's the O-line. Now we'll talk about, where are we going? O-line, we'll go from O-line. We'll, we'll start at D-tackle. Big, big, when I say big recruit, big, literally 6'5". 329 pound Manny Rogers. Odell says this guy is the best D tackle um, he's seen this year uh, in the South. I believe is what was it was his exact words. Now of course Odell's gonna say that, but I'm gonna take Odell's word for it. That's a big dude. Um, there's been some talks of him being. They talked about his athleticism is off the charts. There's been some talks about him being. A uh, offensive lineman. Excuse me, but word is Odell's not letting him go. Uh, so you can you can cancel Christmas. Um, you can cancel Christmas on that when Odell's not gonna let that man go anywhere. Uh, he'll be a D tackle for sure going forward. And uh, so we'll go from the D tackles. We'll go to our D ends. And we signed technically one, but we did get a transfer. So we missed out on Morvin Joseph. Um, you know, good luck to Morvin up there in Tennessee. Um, coming from a fellow Brave, I would have wanted to see you. I wanted to see you, you know, to continue wearing that garnet and gold in Tallahassee. But, you know, you and your family felt like Tennessee was right for you. Um, you know, congratulations on that. Uh, this is coming from a fellow brave man. Wanted to see you, but we got big country. Josh Griffiths, uh, 6'4", 236. This is another guy that Odell has some good things to say about. Odell said, this guy reminds him of Bjorn Warner, and that's big praise. Now, Bjorn Warner was a three-star as well, but if he's anything close to the player Bjorn Warner ended up becoming in college, you got to remember that look at Bjorn Warner became All-American, All-ACC, like, one of the top DNs in the country. So if you can get anything like that out of Josh Griffiths, uh, we got us a sleeper right there. High motor kid. I don't know if he's talent, like elite athleticism, but, uh, you know, Bjorn Warner, that's what they're comparing him to. That's what Odell's comparing him to. So we'll see how that goes. And then we got Louisville transfer. Big boy. Goes by the name of Jarrett Jackson from Palm Beach again. I'm mean, telling you about them, them, them South Florida players. Another West Palm kid. Um, 6'5", 265. And his one year playing did record two sacks and three tackles for loss. Those are like his big stats. I don't know if he's a, the, the, the pass rusher we need. But he's another big body we put on the edge. And we'll see what we got going forward with him. Um, from the DNs, man, I did it again. I'm sorry. From the DNs, we go, we go D tackle, DN. Now we're going to talk some linebackers. And uh, we signed two linebackers. First one, Steven Dix Jr., 6'2, 210 pounds. I like the measurables for a young linebacker. He's got some height, probably still has some room to fill out. And then Jayun McCluster, 6'1", 206. So two similar players. I really wish we would have been able to keep Green in the fold. Um, they're probably 
I'm hearing that they're they're solid and they're happy on the um on the linebackers. I probably personally would want to see one more, but I get it if they don't. And uh, that's the linebackers. And now we only signed two DBs. And let's start off with Jadarius Green McKnight, 5'11", 204. So he's short, but he's solid built. Um, safety, who likes to hit, likes to punish. So I'm with it all the way when you like to hit. And then, of course, our highest rated recruit, you know, the guy that I think everybody in the country would take at this point, but 6'1", 190 pounds, love his measurables at corner. Uh, Demory Tate, uh, yeah, if you haven't watched that kid's tape, go watch it. He has a chance to be, he has a chance to be special for sure. And yeah, I can't wait to see him. He probably could be a day one contributor. If you assume that next year we get Travis J in the fold, you know, we're losing Samuels, thank God. Stanford Samuels, that is. Um, Maybe you could move Dent the corner. You could put Tate at the other corner, or you know, I don't know. But I mean, when you got two guys like Dent, Tate, and now Travis J, if we get to see him next year, whew, secondary could finally get back to looking like it's supposed to look, and that's a big deal. And finally, Alex Mastronamano, I think that's his name, six three, two hundred fifteen pound punter. Why would I even care about a punter? Well, guess what? We've had some suck-ass punting the last few years, and they went out and got a punter from Australia. Now, I don't know how good this kid is, but just the fact that he's from Australia tells me he can kick the damn ball. Probably a rugby player or was a rugby player. So that's a big deal, in my opinion. And that pretty much um, rounds out our, all our early, early signees. Um, and as far as I'm concerned... That's good stuff, man. Norvell and this staff did a good job of holding on to pretty much every prospect. They only pretty much missed on Morvin as far as guys that after that decommitted that were still considering it. They only really missed out on Morvin. Um, I would have loved to have Morvin in the class. Oh, rain's blowing on the porch right now. Wind's picking up. But I would have loved to have Morvin in the class, but we didn't get him. Um, that was really the only miss. They literally was able to keep every kid on board. And then they added some uh, some surprises, right? With Chubba Purdy, the punter, and this uh, Kentron Poirier. I don't, think, I don't think anybody was even following that. So I think, man, I think they did a great job. I thought they would have did a great job um, as long as they kept the class together. But the fact that you added a Chubba, you were able to flip a Chubba Purdy, kind of really made me say that uh, signing day was a win. It was, it was a win regardless. You added two quarterbacks, and one guy was rated higher than the guy that you ended up letting go. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. Let's talk about Malachi Wyman, right? And is this D, big deal or no deal, right? You know I like to play this game where it's big deal or no deal. He's the only prospect that is verbally committed that has not signed yet. I haven't heard anything. I've heard rumors, but you know me, I don't do too well with the rumors. Um, I haven't heard anything solid as to why Wyman didn't sign early. I'm going to guess personally, probably has a lot to do with him playing basketball. And uh, the fact that he's a two-sport you know, star. Um, I'm going to go, at this point, I'm going to go no deal. I mean, like, I don't really think, r remember, uh, Akeem Dent, who had been, he been, he had been no-blooded all season, didn't do early. He's, he waited till National Signing Day to end up signing. A lot of people thought, oh, is that a big deal? It didn't turn out to be one, right? Um, until I hear anything about Malachi Wyman going somewhere else, I'm going to say uh, there's no deal. I'm j I just think... Dude probably got a lot on his plate at this point in his season. Yeah, no deal for me. I think he'll eventually be on the on the team. And that is going to be a nasty wide receiver class right there. If you pull out. It's already a really good one. But if you, if you haven't watched Malachi Wyman's tape, man, go watch that kid. That kid is an insane athlete. He is, like, has 
pops out the building, bro. Go watch him. Go check him out. FSU pulls that one out. That's big time, right? That's big time. Um, And, yep, like I said, I'm going to give Norvell and this staff like a solid A on early signing period because they were able to land every target they were after with the exceptional one. And I think most people didn't think more of them was coming anyway. But they were able to land every guy, including the late quarterback pushes, um, a wide receiver push that I don't think anybody was expecting. Um, you didn't lose any guys like, you know, Torfili or Tate. You didn't lose any of these kids. These kids still came. You still was able to get them. That's a big deal. I'm giving you an A, and I'm very interested. They set the bar. They set the bar. So now I got to see how you close out on actual national signing day. I'm not saying I expect some big five stars. Probably aren't any big stars like that left. But I would love to see how you close out. If you're just looking at numbers, we need some more running backs. We could probably use another offensive lineman. I would like another D tackle or two. Probably another D end or two. Um, running backs, D ends, and D tackles, I think, would really be the, the, the focal point. Um, whether that's JUCO or whatever, grad transfers, that should be the focal point going forward for, for the staff. And let's see how they close out, man. I think uh, Coach Norvell did a good job on national sign, uh, early, on early signing day. I was uh, impressed that they were able to do the things that they were able to do. Let's talk about this, um, this transition, and then we'll get on up out of here. After a couple few new, more news and notes, but let's transition to the staff. A lot of staff talk. There's a lot of guys. We got a new offensive line coach, or yeah, what we believe will be the offensive line coach, because he was the offense former offensive line coach at TCU. It's not confirmed that he's going coming here to be the offensive line coach, but Chris Thompson. Is your all is your new coach on the staff? TCU's former offensive line coach, and I believe it was today. TCU just had one of their offensive linemen decommit. So keep an eye on that. He they just had an offensive lineman decommit. We'll see if he follows his boy over here to Tallahassee. Um, if you haven't seen Buddy's picture, he looks exactly what I want my offensive lineman to look like. I wish I could uh, like video edit this and put it in. I don't know. I'm not keen on the video editing. If you are keen on it, man, hit me up. Teach me something. Let me know how to do it. I'll leave my uh, I'll leave my email in the description, man. Email me and be like, yo, this is the program, the software you want to download or whatever. But I wish y'all could see this picture because it's a great picture and he's exactly what an O-line coach should look like and needs to look like. Chris Thompson, um, offensive line. Former TCU offensive line coach. Don't know if that's his role coming to Florida State. But one can surmise he'll have a similar role like that. <sighs> Second big hire. Chris Marv out of Mississippi State. New linebacker coach. He was the linebacker coach at Mississippi State. So he's doing him a lateral move there. And... This one is impressive in the sense of he's rated like the number one linebacking coach, like under 40 in the country. So I love the fact that Norville's hiring guys that he's worked with, guys that he hasn't worked with. He has no ties to Chris Marr, but he's a, you're hiring some young, some energetic guys and a guys that can actually coach. Um, I know a lot of people like Raymond Woody for his recruiting. Uh, not so much his coaching, but I think this is a guy that improve is improvement across the board over Raymond Woody. He could probably recruit just as well, and I know he can coach, you know, probably better. So Chris Marr, another good um, pickup. I'm assuming again, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know all these coaches that they be naming. Half of us don't pay attention to the position coaches, right? Until it becomes searching for a coach time um but just what i'm reading what i'm hearing that's a good hire um 
Terrell Buckley. T-Buck rumors are heating up to coach this secondary. They have not named a secondary coach yet. I would love for it to be T-Buck. It'll probably go elsewhere, but there are some rumors heating up about T-Buck. Um, FSU has also hired um, former Nebraska. I want to say he was Nebraska. I don't know if he was the D coordinator, but I know he was on the defensive staff. John Papa Papchuis. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, bro. But he, and they've hired him as a special team slash DN's coach. So that's interesting. And lastly, on the coaching hires, I'm hearing Telly Lockett has been retained in some fashion on the staff, which I think is an extremely smart move. I think after all the coaches, you know, he already kept Dugans, right? He already kept Odell. Well, Telly Lockett also has connections down there in Miami. And you get Dugans and Lockett down there in Miami, you got some serious recruiting firepower down there in Miami. Remember, Telly Lockett coached uh, guys like uh, Dalvin Cook, Yearby. I think he even coached Freeman, if I'm not mistaken. And Telly Lockett's got deep dot, deep roots down there in Dade County. And, yeah, that's a good that's a good retain. I don't know if he's staying on as the tight ends coach or the running back coach. Uh, we'll see. But I'm hearing that he has been retained on the staff. And that's your coaching hire. I think Norville's doing a good job hiring. From what I, what I like about what he's doing is he's hiring a very diverse staff young guys older guys experience up and comers you know i love it i love what he's doing there you know i think when we go hindsight right and it's 2020 i think when you look at willie and what he was doing i think a lot of us wanted to believe in some of these guys um but i think looking like walt bell was never a good hire harlan was never a good hire and the rest of the guys were really his buddies, you know. So, out of all his buddies, I've always liked Lockett and Raymond Woody the best. Um, so, they're keeping Lockett. And, obviously, Woody's going on to do other things. Um, quick, some another quick, let's do some quick notes, and then we'll get out of here. Almost going on 30 minutes, so I'm making pretty good time. Layborn undergo surgery according to Odell so I, we already thought he was going to be suspended for the bowl game so this just confirms it he's out for the bowl game at least Sheffield as the only running back we have on the roster uh, and I just want to touch on I want to touch on the Arizona State game I should do some more I'll, I'll be doing some more content on the Arizona game going uh, up into the game but the truth is if you look at the roster if you look at the transition that's going on in Tallahassee right now Arizona should win this bowl game comfortably. Um, you've got a bunch of coaches coaching this game that won't be coaching next year. Now, there might be some incentive for some of those coaches. They go out there, you give a good performance, they can get jobs. Like, I'm surprised Kendall Browns does not have a job lined up. I think that is in extremely interesting that Kendall Browns does not have a job lined up after he leaves. Um, I thought that was, I thought he'd be one of the hot commodities on FSU staff. Um, Harlan Barnett, I'm not surprised he don't have a job lined up. But with that said, maybe if your defense can come out and show something, you can get a job next year. Um, you know, Pim, this is your chance, right? You're not laboring. Acres are not there. If oh, maybe if Sheffield goes out there, maybe he tears it up. Maybe Pimp can find himself down there, which I think guys like Pimpleton anyway. I think Pimpleton probably goes down there with FAU with Willie Taggart, if I had to guess. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Raymond Woody would probably follow Willie Taggart down there. Uh, so, yeah. I don't we That game probably uh, might be competitive for a little bit, but you've got a lot of transition. Again, a lot of coaches that won't be there next year. I don't know. I don't really think you should look at that game as it means anything, you know. If we win it, and even then if we win it, it's like, well, again, those guys you won it with won't be there next year. And that team's going to be a totally different team the following year. At, at least if you win it, you get some good feelings going into the offseason. 
you know, maybe some guys that haven't played could show some talent. Then we'll see how that works out. Um, but, yeah, I don't think anybody, you know, if you're a Florida State fan, I don't really think, man, you should expect a lot from this Arizona State Bowl game. Uh, good, to, good for us to be in a good bowl game. Good for them guys to get them practices in. But I don't really think you should expect a win. Normally, I don't say that about a Pac-12 team. I watched a little bit of Arizona's Oregon game. Um, if they come out like they did in that game, they got a nice freshman quarterback that really that really was recruiting. Go figure. They got a you know, he might be able to do some things on us. His, our secondary is known for having lapses. I mean, we'll see, but I don't expect any big. I don't I don't I don't expect us to win that Arizona State game. But yep. Man, that's it. I hit the 30-minute mark. I just want to do a quick recap of what happened this week, man, with the national signing day. Excuse me, early signing day. Um, some of the coaching moves that has taken place. I wanted to get tune in with y'all. You know, y'all know how I like to do. Do my end of the week recaps. I work during the week, and a lot of times I don't like to do the quick reactions because then things change, right? So I get all the facts throughout the week, get on here, we talk about it, give my opinions on it. I, you know, just a quick recap of everything. We got all the signings that I thought we should have got. They got Chubba, my dog, Chubba Purdy, in the building. I say it right here, right now. That's your day one starter next year, most likely. Um, Norville gets an A for me for what he did just being able to lock up the guys he locked up and flip the guys he flipped. Norvell gets that A. Norvell's getting like a B plus to an A on signing some of these staff members. That could change once they start actually playing football games. But I'm liking the diversity. And I'm liking the fact that he's getting guys from different programs and different places. Uh, uh, I think he's putting together a hell of a staff. And again, Laybourne undergoes some surgery. He will not play. We're down to one back for that for the bowl game. And I don't expect much from the bowl game, man. But, yo, had to keep my holiday theme going. Happy holidays to y'all. Christmas is right around the corner, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share your thoughts with me. As I always tell y'all, man, I love the dialogue. If y'all get on here, y'all comment, and we can talk about it. Ask anybody. I almost 100% reply to y'all comments because I love discussing Florida State football. Once I can get enough followers, <laughs> you know, I got I got like 32 subscribers now, so I'm growing slowly, but I'm growing. We got a core fan base that I'm, I fucks with you. Once I get some more guys, I like to do some live streams, man, and we can talk live on the chat. You know, I got things I want to do, and I got plans. But, yeah, man, comment, like, subscribe, share it. This is the Polk County Knoll, man. Happy holidays. Hit that like button. Hey, go nose. We coming back.